GetterAtCoach.com, a nanophthalma guy with a flat anterior chamber. So do a limited parts plan to retract me to help deepen the AC. Let me show you the case here. Very tiny eye, less than 20 millimeter axial length. Look at that steep cornea. AC depth is only two millimeters. Gonna be tough. Advanced glaucoma plus the dense cataract. How are you gonna approach this case? Well, let me tell you, our two guest surgeons, Dr. Nandini Venkateswaran, anterior segment surgeon, and Dr. Namesh Patel, a retina surgeon. Both are at Mass Eye and Ear at Harvard Medical School there in Boston. And first, they're doing a vitreous decompression, just a little bit at a time. Pars plana, look at the trocar, and such a smart idea, putting that sleeve on top of the vitrector so you don't go too deep in the a, in the vitreous cavity. A little tripan blue dye going in there. Just check and make sure it's normal pressure, and you can do a little bit at a time, a little bit of vitreous decompression to help lower the IOP to get it where you want. Again, be very cautious. I love the fact that we've got our cataract surgeon and our retina surgeon working together on this same case. Iris hooks going in. I like that idea too. This is a tiny little eye. Remember, measure out that capsule because I like your forceps, by the way, with all those marks on them so we can judge the size. It's important because you're still going to put in an optic that's going to have a six millimeter diameter. So don't make some tiny baby rexes. This looks just about perfect. I like the six iris hooks. Very nice. Now remember, here's why you need your retina specialist. In a tiny eye like this, where exactly is pars plana? And are you going to look for entry site breaks? You better. And so this is why it's nice to share the love and the liability with your friendly neighborhood retina doctor. So in the U.S., very commonly, cataract surgeons just do cataract or anterior segment, do anterior segment, and the retina doctors do the rest. So here, nucleus disassembly, a little bit of a groove there, and then a vertical chop, very nice splitting here. Again, this is a stressful case, especially in a patient like this who's basically monocular, a very stressful case. So taking your time on this is really a great idea. And that little bit of groove in the middle prior to the chop is really smart because it decompresses especially the densest central endonucleus, and kind of gives you a little bit more working room inside the eye. And, oh, really nice chop there. We're going to take out these pieces. Really nice, these two young surgeons who are now, you know, up-and-coming faculty members there at Harvard, really doing a beautiful case to really help this patient. And I'm going to show you at the end, it's a beautiful result for the patient. So again, this is a time where you want to just slow it down, just like doctor's doing here, now that he's doing a beautiful job, taking out this cataract, bringing those pieces up, nice and easy, nice and easy. I'd even slow down the flow rate on this case. Don't be in a hurry. We want to take our time. Those iris hooks in this case are actually better than a pupil expansion ring. Why is that? Well, the pupil expansion ring adds extra bulk into a very shallow anterior chamber, small AC. Now, recoding of the endothelium, beautiful, smart move there. And now just more nucleus disassembly, slowly but surely, and taking these pieces down. I also like the draping is great with that uh, draping. There are zero eyelashes in the surgical field. That is so important. And now about half the nucleus is out. Now the remaining half is coming. And again, I like the idea of leaving that trocar in the eye as well in case you need to access something else. Now, if you are going to do this, it's very important to first know where parts plana is. Second, you have to check to make sure you don't have an entry site break after you put in that uh, vitrector there. And then you also want to do it very cautiously. Only move a little bit at a time. Do it in baby steps. Learn the technique here where a sleeve was placed on top of the vitrector so it would only go inside the eye a certain amount of depth, just a couple millimeters. And then be careful, don't hit the crystalline lens or the back surface of that posterior capsule with the vitrector. You'll be in a world of trouble otherwise. And so here it was done just beautifully. My technique for doing it, if I am going to do a little bit of an anti-vitrecting with the pars plana, is I'd actually make a paracentesis. And in one hand, have the vitrector through the pars plana. In the other hand, I'd put in a viscoelastic cannula to slightly deepen the AC. So I do it with the right hand, I do a little bit of a, the antivitrectomy, just a couple seconds, two, three, four seconds. Then with the left hand, inject a little more viscoelastic. And then to go back to the right hand, a little more vitrectomy, and then the left hand, a little more viscoelastic, until I got the AC depth that I wanted. Because if you go back there and take out a lot of vitreous, and this is a small eye, remember 19 millimeter eye, if you take out a lot of vitreous, you may have an overly deep anterior chamber, and you don't want that either. 
So nice and easy, removing all that lens material. The nucleus is basically out. Notice we're also using here a smaller sleeve. That looks like a 2.2 or 2.4 millimeter sleeve. Cortex removal coming up. Now, what do you do with the lenses? Well, calc it out however you want. Um, in the U.S., you can get up to a 40 diopter single piece acrylic lens on the Alcon Acrosoft platform. You can get close to that, somewhere in the mid-30s on the Johnson & Johnson and the Bausch & Lomb platforms. I would not primarily do a piggyback lens here. I don't think it's a great idea. So here, you're putting a J&J &J lens in, 29 half diopter lens. That is great, going right in the capsule bag, aiming for a post-op refractive outcome, about minus one. That is great. So why isn't the lens power higher? Well, the patient, remember, had very steep corneas, 51 diopters in one meridian. So because of that, the lens power is going to be less. If the patient had a 19.8 millimeter axial length, but had a flatter cornea, you may have a lens power in the mid-30s or even high 30s. Here at the end, retina examine, a little bit of atrophy noted. Good thing you have your retina colleague on board. And then here, finally, at the end, a beautiful outcome. So what a great case. Close up that sclerotomy. Thank you guys for sharing. And the patient had a beautiful 2040 outcome. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. cataractcoach.com. Check it out.